issues that actually disturb me uh, and still disturb me uh, today, I mean, in day-to-day -day life, where you actually, we have seen so many uh, innocent souls uh, dying or people are suffering and maybe uh, there's no one to look after them. As if, I mean, as you very well know that uh, in our country, uh, it's now uh, the tenth year of our independence, and though Zimbabwe is, uh, is independent, we still have, I mean, people suffering, people, I mean, still sleeping in the streets, and it's a, uh, it's a worldwide problem anyway. We've been moving, I mean, we have been seeing other places, big cities like, I mean, the New York, London, uh, well, everywhere we have seen this problem, and uh, it, uh, it seems that, I mean, the, the leaders of today uh, don't want to address that issue. But how much can in, uh, music influence political change? Well, as you know, um, music of, the, of today is like, it's the voice of those who cannot speak for themselves. And uh, uh, it is like, I mean, their voice, they we, uh, they, they speak through the music, and we actually speak for them when we write these songs. We, 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 we speak for the poor people who cannot speak for themselves. So we, we, we think music has a very, very important role to, to, to play today. You've even spent some time in prison because of your forthrightness, haven't you? Oh, yeah. I spent quite some time, I mean, behind bars because of the type of music that I'm doing today. And um, anyway, to me, that was nothing because I, I just thought I was a freedom fighter. In the 1970s, during the War of Liberation, Thomas Mafumo's new style of music was a source of pride and encouragement to those who heard it on Radio Free Zimbabwe. 
With a series of anti-government, pro-resistance singles, Mapumo's Shona lyrics bore allusions to the great 19th century Chimurenga revolt against white rule. Whilst inspiring the struggle, he was in turn inspired by a traditional chant, which the guerrillas used to sing. I'm very, very proud of, of what I've actually achieved because most of these youngsters who are playing African music today didn't have their own music. They were into copyright music until they actually heard from Thomas Perfume and the Black Sun Limited. They were not used to, I mean, to, 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 to playing this type of music. And they were, they were very much into copyright music. They were playing soul music, all, I mean, all Western uh, uh, styles, jazz, whatnot. But when I got, when I started doing, I mean, uh, African music, everyone stopped and, well, they started following in the, in, the, in the same steps. And today we have so many bands trying to, 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 to play their own, own type of music, but which is African, and that pleases me a lot. We met the four brothers and they said that they knew you well and you'd influenced them. Of course, one of them is my uncle. That's, uh, the, he's a brother to my mother. So he actually knows uh, about me and how I grew up. He used to teach me everything. Even when I started playing, He's the one who taught me how to play drums. So from there, after playing drums, he taught me how to sing. So I can say he's the one I'm following, his footsteps. Oh, we used to play Beatles sound, Rolling Stones, and so on from Western music. Because that time, people back home didn't appreciate their own music. I don't know what was causing that. So they started appreciating their own music after independence. Now, Korokoto means congratulations. That's because we were just congratulating our freedom fighters for getting independence for us. And I, in, in Christianity, and I, as, as I, I told you, I grew up in a church. My, my, my parents were church people. My, my father was a church leader and my, also my mother. And uh, we went to church a lot, Sunday schools, as, a young, as, as youngsters. We were going to Sunday schools, uh, the afternoon church, and, uh, and uh, the evening. So we grew up in the church, and my, my parents were very strict about that, about us. They didn't want us to, to do any other thing, you know, besides going to church. You sit now very happily with the spiritual side, your village side, and your Christian side. You can marry the two easily. Oh, yeah. Because, you know, uh, in African beliefs, you know, they believe that um, those who died a long time ago are the nearest to God. They actually can speak to God. And we cannot speak direct to God because we have never seen God ourselves. Those who died long time ago, they have the access, I mean, to speak to God because they are near, they're near him. Maybe they're living with him. So through them, we actually have to say what, whatever we want, uh, want to say. If we want to communicate with our own God, we have to consult those who died long time ago who are living in the world of spirits and tell them exactly what messages we want them to convey to God.
I have a very strong spiritual side. You know, when I come overseas here, when I'm touring, I don't just get on the plane. I don't do that. I have to go to the country to, to consult my, my elders that I'm going out. And they have the last word. And they always, I mean, sit down with me and tell me uh, how to go about things. And they also have to, to talk to our ancestors that today your child is going out and you have to look after him. It is only you who have the powers to look after him. You are in the uh, world of spirits. You can look after your son. So there he goes. <laughs> 